Hello everybody, today we have another long fan fiction for you guys. We're going to be reading Diary of Wimpy Kid, The Freshman. So if you guys didn't know, a while ago I did start reading um, Diary of Wimpy Kid, Greg Goes to High School, but unfortunately I found out a bit too late that that was unfinished, so I just pretty much read it for nothing, and I did not continue with it, even though there are chapters I haven't read. Anyway, I did ask the community on the community tab if I should continue with it, so go vote on that even though it is not finished, but instead I found this fanfiction diary of Kid the Freshman, which essentially is a complete version of Greg's Goes to High School, polished off, done, very nice, and I decided I'll be reading it today for you guys. So yeah, this is going to be a pretty long one, so make sure to grab your snacks, and yeah, let's get straight into it. September, Sunday. Well, it finally happened. I've graduated from middle school. Tomorrow will be my official first day at Plainview High. Middle school didn't go exactly as planned, and I don't really think I have to explain why. I'm still best friends with Rowley, and I'm still nowhere near I need, where I need to be in the popul- <laughs> September, Sunday. Well, it finally happened. I've graduated from middle school. Tomorrow will be my first official day at Plainview High. Middle school didn't go exactly as planned, and I don't really think I have to explain why. I'm still best friends with Rowley, and I'm still nowhere near where I need to be in the popularity scale, but that's all changing this year. Basically, from what I've heard from Roderick, freshman year of high school is make or break for your reputation. Mess up, and you're stuck labeled as uncool for the next four years, and the last thing I need is a repeat of middle school. I tried explaining all this to Rowley, but he still seemed a little upset about going to Plainview High in the first place. Rally actually got accepted into Plain Hill Prep, the high school downtown that's known for basically getting every student into an Ivy League school. But thankfully, I put an end to that ever happening. You wouldn't last a day in high school without me. I'm sure he'll get over it soon enough. By the time freshman year is over, we'll both have hot chicks all over us and nerds doing our homework for us. He'll be thanking me for being the best thing to ever happen to him. I spent the last week or so hounding Roderick for advice. I figured it was the least he could do before going off to college. Turns out, Loaded Diaper didn't blow up like Roderick wanted to. Can't say anyone was surprised there, but when Roderick announced to all of us he was seriously looking to go to college, we were shocked. I guess Mum and Dad already given up hope on him by then. When Mum asked Roderick what schools he wanted to go to, he had listed the top party schools, but he ended up getting into one, so I guess it all worked out. Anyways, Roderick had explained to me that there are established social groups in high school, and you have to decide which one you want to join. The upper tier of the groups were the popular kids, jocks, and rich kids. The bottom tier was filled with loners, emos, and nerds. I asked Roderick where he was in all this, and he told me he was one of the popular kids in school, but this is coming from someone who spent his Friday nights at the local gas station, so I took it with a grain of salt. What Roderick told me honestly didn't sound much different than middle school, but I'm not taking any chances. In fact, I've already made a bunch of preparations for the first day of school. I begged mom to take me to the mall and buy me a bunch of new clothes. I figured looking sharp would be an easy way to look cooler. Besides, I was done wearing Twisted Wizard shirts to school every day. But at the same time, I didn't want to try too hard. There's a lot of trends going on now, and I'm sure they'll look really dumb in a few years. Monday. I don't really know what I was expecting for my first day in high school, but this definitely wasn't it. For starters, when Rowley and I walked inside, the hallways were packed from end to end. It was impossible to get anywhere without getting shoved or elbowed, and the building was way bigger than Westmore. We barely made it to our first class on time. Plainview High combined all the other public schools in town, so I guess that's why it was so crowded. During second period, an announcement came on the overhead saying that all freshmen had to go into the gymnasium for an assembly after class. They herded us all into the bleachers, down onto the gym floor, there were cheerleaders dancing, the band playing, and athletes, and all sorts of people running around. Eventually, some girl with a bullhorn came in and started talking to us. She said she was the student council president and told us high school was a chance for us to be whoever we wanted to be. and started listing a bunch of clubs and things we could join. That got me thinking. I never really was involved with anything in middle school. Well, there was a school play in grade 6. Who knew throwing apples at Patty Farrell would be the highlight of my three years there? Anyways, if I joined some group, I could definitely boost my popularity. Problem is, I'm not particularly good at anything. Well, I am good at video games, but I've seen the kind of people who join those clubs, and trust me, it's not pretty. I think they were the people Roderick was talking about in the quote-unquote bottom tier. Joining football could get me popular, but I'm not a really big fan of physical activity. Besides, those guys stay after school until like 6, and I really like using that time to take naps before dinner. 
That assembly eventually ended, and they sent us all back to class. While I was walking past the student council girl, I realized something. I don't say this about a lot of girls, but she was really pretty. Holly Hills is the only is only about ninth prettiest in the grade now, but this girl was definitely top five. That's when I got a genius idea. I could join the student council. It was pretty much guaranteed way to get more popular. Plus, I could hang out with the student council girl. Now all I have to do is find her on social media so I can make a good first impression. And he's already stalking her. Great. Good job, Greg. Doubly Riz. Friday. It's finally the end of the week. Nothing really interesting has happened so far. School is bigger and the work seems harder, but for the most part, it's not too different from middle school. But to be honest, making friends is more difficult than I thought it would be. Feels like everyone else already knows each other, even though classes have just started. So far, what Roderick told me didn't seem true. There's a lot of cliques, sure, but the lines of finding them are blurred. Luckily, I fourth period English with Rally and Shrog, and boy was I relieved to see some familiar faces in that class. By the way, I checked the school website, and the student council president's girl's name is Olivia Olson, but I couldn't find any of her social media accounts, which is weird, because I'm usually really good at that sort of thing. What are you implying there, Greg? I told Rally about Olivia after school today, and he said that she was actually in his upper-level chemistry class, and that got my attention. Rally's taking these weird math and science classes that are apparently for brainy people. It's all not to be only nerds take those classes, but you didn't want to hear it. Education is more important than popularity, Greg. Today was the last day we could still switch classes, so I knew I had what I had to do at that moment. Want to head to my place, Greg? Gotta go. I was just able to fill out a form because before the office was closed for the weekend. I glanced at the syllabus on my way home, and that class looked way harder than what I was in before. Things better pan out with Olivia, or else I'm completely in the needless, self-induced four months of stress. Making decisions that would have a major impact on my life based on a girl I didn't even know wasn't the smartest thing I've ever done, but hey, you gotta take risks once in a while. Thursday. Something else different about high school is that they have a block schedule. What that means is that you only go to four of your classes on A days, and you go to the remaining four of your B classes on B days. I didn't like it at first, but then I realized it basically gave me an extra day to do my homework. Somehow, I still managed to get behind, though. We had a quiz on polyatomic ions today in chemistry, but I had a hard time focusing for some reason. See, back in middle school, it was pretty easy to cheat off other people, but now everyone's super competitive about their GPA, and the teachers take cheating a lot more seriously. Eyes on your own paper, Hefley. And to make things worse, this chemistry class is eating up a ton of my free time. There's so many ions and formulas and other crazy things you have to memorize, plus half the class doesn't even understand what Mrs. Bell teaches in her lectures. Olivia sits at the front of the class, and I sit at the back since I joined Lee. Somehow it seems that like she doesn't stress over chemistry much at all. In fact, she turns on her work halfway through class and starts doing homework for other classes. Friday. Since chemistry was already seeming like a bust, I decided to go through with my plan of joining the, the student council. After school today was their first general meeting. I just wish I had made up a different excuse this morning when I told Mum not to pick me up. I'm so glad you're finally applying yourself, Greg. Mom started going over on how I could improve my leadership skills in public speaking. Good thing she doesn't know about the real person, a real person slash reason I'm going. Rally uh, had some karate thing he had to go to, so I got Shirog to tag along. The meeting started at 4 o'clock in the student council room, which is just an empty classroom. Olivia was by the door welcoming everyone in, so I tried to play it as cool as possible. Welcome, you're Greg, right? Since all the officer positions were already taken, we would have to be the committee which sounded like it was basically the officer's lackeys. Here's another thing. Livia started talking about how Plainview High had a vaping problem. Apparently, the bathrooms were full of people vaping and smoking. She said the principal approached the student council personally and tried to request that they report any sp sp suspicious activity. The vice president, Michael, pointed out that since everyone at the school already knew who the officers were, there was no way anyone would be dumb enough to smoke in front of them. I remembered I was here to impress Olivia, so I figured I should make myself useful. Since Shirok and I are freshmen, no one around school knows that we're part of the council yet. We could try and buy from the upperclassmen, then report them back to you. Everyone thought that was such a great idea, but I'm starting to have second thoughts. Next week, you're going to have Shirok and I go into the bathrooms during study hall and see what happens. Thing is, I don't really care about snitching on random kids at all. The way I see it, if a kid wants to smoke or something, they're going to do it regardless, and it's better not to make a huge deal out of it. If word gets out I'm a huge snitch, I can hiss my hopes of popularity goodbye. Back in the elementary school, Mom was a part of these campaigns that would come to school and give presentations about the dangers of drugs, but I don't think it ever got through to anyone. Back then, kids my age didn't even know the first thing about drugs, so the presentation ended up doing more harm than good. 
oh, and I thought Shirog was going to be pissed at me for dragging him into this, but he was actually excited. He started blabbering on how we were going to be undercover and stuff like that. And then it made me wonder just how much the invisible Shirog joke messed him up in the head. Monday. So Shirog and I had our first drug test today. After English, we got together and went into the boys' bathroom by the senior hall. Sure enough, there were a group of seniors hanging out and smoking in the corner. We were supposed to ask them if we could buy some vape carts from them after school and then have the student council confront them. But of course, things never go as planned. What do you runs want? We would like to purchase two marijuanas, please. <laughs> sure, we've got some on us now. That'll be 90 bucks each. We accept. We didn't actually have 180 bucks, but I was able to use my ne ne negotiation skills. But we only have 100. The student council gave us 50 each to use, but I figured we were getting ripped off, but I just wanted to get out there as fast as possible. He said that was fine, and handed us two plastic bags of weed. Shrog and I stuffed the ba our backpacks and sprinted out of there. Man, I couldn't believe Shrog screwed everything up. I didn't have time to ask him what the hell he was thinking, because the bell rang and we had to go to our next class. I couldn't focus on anything for the rest of my day with literal drugs on my possession. I'm pretty sure I bombed another chemistry quiz, but honestly, I barely remember even taking it. But finally, the eighth period bell rang, and I hightailed it, behind the school to meet Shirog. I couldn't wait to get rid of the weed. It was taking years off my life already. I told Shirog we should text Olivia and meet in the student council room. But get this, Shirog said he wanted to keep the weed and try to smoke it. Well, that was the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I beg never pegged Shirog as a type. What? No, are you kidding, Shrog? We're committing a crime right now. We have drugs on us. Dude, why are you so bent? This is a win-win. You have what on you? Man, I should try to keep my voice down. I said she was going to report me to the principal, then walked off. Yeah, I'm screwed. Tuesday. I spent all last night tossing and turning. I figured in the very best scenario, I'd only get suspended. But knowing my luck, I'd end up arrested. I didn't know what was up with Holly. We haven't talked much since middle school, but I never thought she'd be the kind of person to make a big deal out of this. But based on how I judge Shrog, I don't know anything at all. In first period, I heard the overhead beep, and I knew it was time. Fragly Allen, please report to the principal's office immediately. Somehow, after all these years, Holly Hill still thought my name was Fragly. I'm still a little offended, but I knew it was worth it when I watched the security officer escort Allie, Ra Fragly sorry, out of the school during passing period. I guess I felt a little bad for Fragly, but then I remember how he got sent home last week for releasing worms into the bleachers during an assembly. Maybe this could be a positive development for him. Fragly started taking the fall from Fragly taking the fall from me felt like a huge weight lifted off my shoulders, and he kind of owed me for all the mental anguish he's caused me over the years. I actually sort of enjoyed myself for the rest of the day. I thought about confronting Shirog and Holly, but decided to just keep riding my wave of luck as long as possible. Wednesday, after the Fragly mishap, Olivia decided we could drop the whole narc act. Instead, we're planning the homecoming dance coming up next month. So far, it's actually been pretty fun. We were able to make executive decisions on the music playlist, which is going to be a huge step up from the middle school dance. The only problem is I need to start thinking about finding someone to go with before everyone's already taken. Yesterday, Tyson Sanders asked Holly Hills during lunch, and he brought this huge teddy bear and a fancy poster. Holly, I couldn't bear to go to homecoming without you. A bunch of guys saw what was happening, and soon enough, there was a whole crowd gathered around them cheering Tyson on. Holly said no, though, and that really let the air out of the room. I don't know what Tyson was thinking because Holly is way out of his league. Holly was just waiting for Bryce Anderson to ask. In fact, the girls have been asking him first, which is making sharing homeroom very uncomfortable. I'll admit seeing Bryce get all this attention gets under my skin. I've come to realize that a girl is probably never going to approach me in my lifetime. I'm seriously considering not going to homecoming at all. Twisted Wizard Online is coming out in the same weekend and it's supposed to be amazing. Anyways, I don't know who started this whole poster trend, but it's totally annoying. I definitely don't want to dump a ton of effort into one just to get rejected. On the way home, I saw Tyson's teddy bear stuffed into the dumpster behind school, which was pretty depressing. Thursday. With homecoming in just over two weeks, I realized we were already a month into the school year and I'd barely made any progress on my quest for popularity. I would have to do something big if I wanted to turn things around. I'm going to homecoming with Olivia. There's a lot of perks of going with Olivia. For starters, she's a sophomore, which would get me a ton of credit with the guys. Plus, Olivia could introduce me to all her older friends, and before you know it, I'll be up there with Bryce in popularity. Speaking of Bryce, he's throwing a huge party after homecoming. Bryce lives on the north side of town near Holly, so I know he's loaded. Fortunately, there's no way I would get invited, but I'm still keeping my ears peeled. October, Friday. Starting this week, the student council has to meet before school instead of after. 
Someone in the yearbook club complained they didn't have enough space, so they got our classroom. So now I have to get to school at 7 a.m. on Fridays, which is awful. Here's the thing. Teens my age need way more sleep than adults do. I've read plenty of studies, and they all say school shouldn't start until 10. There's not one, no wonder half the school shows up looking like zombies. It isn't the first time adults have screwed over us teens to have it their way. In history, we learned that back in the 60s, teens were being shipped off to war before they could even have a beer. Now, I love my country and all, but if I had to choose between the two, it's a no-brainer. I wish I could fight in the war, but I have acute gastritis. People in Spain really have this whole sleeping thing figured out. Last week in Spanish class, we learned that they get to take siestas smack in the middle of the day. I'm totally about that life, so maybe about after college I could move there. But I got a C- minus on our last test though, so maybe I need to take Spanish more seriously for that to ever happen. When I got home today, I was greeted with a nasty surprise. Long time no see, bubby. Understandably, it took me a moment to process the horrific reality in front of me. Once I came to my senses, I managed to spit out the most logical sit question in my situation. What are you doing here, Roderick? So the story is, once Roderick got to college and he joined some fraternity and spent all this time partying and none of it studying, remember for that one time Roderick slept an entire day? History repeated himself. But while on the day, he had all of his midterms. It would be basically impossible, impossible for him to recover his grades, so he had to drop the semester. What do you mean the exam was yesterday? So thanks to that, Roderick is living here again instead of 1,000 miles away from me. Tuition for Roderick's college was pretty expensive, so mom said that he was going to have to get a job or to prove himself before applying someone or somewhere else for the spring. Roderick being back in the house is a little annoying for me, but the only one who seems really down is dad. I don't think I've ever seen dad as depressed as he was that day. <laughs> I shouldn't be surprised about Roderick dropping out. Turns out Dad actually wrote all of his college admissions essays for him. Ironically, now he's typing up Roderick's resume to apply for jobs. With the racket Roderick has going on, he could ride this out for life. But I should have known something was up when a college decided to admit Roderick in the first place. Wednesday. I just found my way into Bryce's party. Today at lunch, Bryce is going over his plans with his cronies. So we're going to need a shit ton of alcohol. And Tyler bailed. How many of you guys have older siblings who could come through? My brother's in college and he could get you everything you need. I told Bryce I could take care of everything on the condition that I would get to go to the party, and to my surprise, he accepted. After school, I told Roderick my situation and asked if he could come through for me this one time. No. I don't know why I expected anything else. I wasn't going to let this opportunity pass me by, though. I had a chance to go to the biggest party in my grade and possibly go with a girl older than me. And if things went right, this could be the talk of the school after homecoming. Saturday. This afternoon, I stooped into Roderick's room while he was applying for jobs with Dad. With the amount of drinking I saw Roderick doing in college from his social media, I figured he had to have a fake ID. Sure enough, I found an age 21 driver's license with his picture stuffed in his drawer. Massachusetts driver's license, Roderick Hefley. Roderick's only 19, but he could probably pass his 21. Me, though, I could walk right back into Westmore and nobody would bat an eye. I knew I wouldn't be able to do this alone, so I called up Rally. Now, I knew Rally wasn't going to be hot on the whole underage drinking thing, so I skipped over some of those details, but I did tell him that Joshie would be making a special appearance at Bryce's party. I know I stretched the truth a little bit there, but Rally's a brute and there's no way I'd have any the energy to carry everything back, back myself. We had just started applying eyeliner to make sure we look older when I heard Roderick's voice behind us. You don't look like my picture, idiot. You lose, you're going to get yourself arrested. I guess I hadn't fully thought the plan through. Roderick said he had a change of heart and would be willing, willing to buy the drinks for us. I thought he was going to ask for money in return, but he said something that really surprised me. He said Dad had applied him to work at a Sahara warehouse next month, and he wanted to find him a different job. I actually could understand where Roderick was coming from, because I've heard about Sahara web warehouses and the news, and apparently they work you like a dog. I agreed immediately, just because I didn't want to pay anything. I guess not having to commit a felony while make wearing makeup was a bonus, too. Rally was a little confused about what was going on, so I just told him this meant we would get to see Joshi for sure. Monday. I saw something interesting on my way to chemistry today. Olivia and Rowley were together, chatting it up like pals. If I had known Rowley was friends with Olivia, I would have told him to put in a good word for me a long time ago. I planned to ask him in class what the big deal was, but Mrs. Bell said something that got my attention. We're having your first lab of the year, and we would get to work in pairs. You're probably thinking that the obvious decision is to ask to work with Olivia, but it's not that simple. See, my grade isn't in chemistry isn't great, but there's a reason I'm still passing. 
A few weeks ago when I was doing my homework, I found a website that had all the answers to the worksheet Mrs. Bell was giving us. So I've been getting perfect grades on all of my assignments without actually having to learn anything. Working with Olivia would expose me as a moron who had no idea what was going on. But right then, I saw Rally moving towards Olivia's desk, which gave me the courage I needed to finally make my move. Olivia, will you be my lab partner? Uh, sure. Rally seems a little steamed for some reason. I don't know what his problem is, since he's always giggling with a bunch of girls in the back of class. He's got plenty of partners to choose from. I still- I didn't have time to worry about him, though. Except one of my plans was complete. Now that Olivia and I are working together, she'll get to see what a great person I am. She's probably- she's normally busy during student council meetings, but now I'll have to undivided attention. She'll have to say yes when I ask her to homecoming. And for the record, when I say what a great person I am, I mean the act I'm going to be putting on for her. I know who I am. Friday. Olivia and I finished the experiment part of the lab today. Well, Olivia's done most of the work, but I help out when I can. She is super smart. At the very least, I'll get a good grade out of this. But the lab report is due Monday, so I enacted part two of my plan. Hey, want to come over to my house tomorrow to finish up the lab report? Yeah, I think I could come over around two or three. Success. W Riz guy, let's go. Saturday. This morning, I told everyone was Olivia was coming over to study, and maybe they could st all stay out of the way. I thought Dad would be annoyed, but he was actually genuinely happy for me. I think he was just glad someone besides Rowley was coming over for the first time in like five years. That's my son. Mom was reading a book, and Manny was distracted by some TV show, so I didn't have to worry about them. Unfortunately, Roderick was actually awake for some reason, and he wouldn't go down to the basement. He just got that grit on him, bro. He's going to do something devious. I know it. That night before, I crammed as much as possible so I wouldn't seem like a complete moron. But that's not all I did. I also had this great idea for talking to Olivia. I didn't want to have any awkward moments, so I brainstormed a bunch of conversation starters. I knew Olivia would notice if I had a random paper on the table, so I wrote them on the side margin of my chemistry notes. I had until 2.30 to make sure everything was in order. I let Olivia in and told her we could go into my room to study. Mom stopped me in my tracks. She said that wasn't appropriate, and the kitchen table was perfectly fine for studying. Bruh, Susan, come on, how are you gonna crank how are you gonna cramp up Greg's ribs, bruh? Let him let him cook, bruh. Let the man cook. He dude, he's working magic here, come on. I complained that Manny's TV show would be too distracting, but then she took him outside to play. I don't know what mom was thinking, but I actually wasn't planning to make a move. I was just worried about Rod what Roderick might do to us out in the open. And just ten minutes in, my fears were realized. Don't forget to take your butt medicine, Gregory. Unfortunately, my sense of humor hasn't really evolved since the Cretan to Cretan comics. What's wrong with your butt, Greg? Uh, it has a crack in it. Really, Greg? Alariz, Alariz, come on, man. The fact that she laughed at that seriously worries me. Every five minutes or so, Roger could go into the kitchen and only take a single grape out of the fridge. And each time he'd walk past us, he'd make this obnoxious moaning noise. I tried to put a stop to it, but it backfired bad bad badly. I'm sorry about my deadbeat, unemployed, college dropout older brother. I'm sorry about Gregory, my wimpy brother who still writes in a diary, and when I record the last episode of Bachelor for you since I know it's your favorite show. I really wanted to let Roderick have it, but I knew it wouldn't be a good look to start wrestling each other in front of Olivia. At one point, Roderick went down to the basement and started drumming the riff from a specific video sharing website, but I'm not sure if Olivia recognized it or not. Your brother's a drummer? My older sister is too. She works at Guitar Center. I made a mental note to tell Roderick to apply for the job. Of course, he gets rewarded for torturing me. The rest of the afternoon actually went well. It was nearly 6 o'clock by the time we finished. My confidence was soaring. I was about to ask Olivia if she wanted to go get something to eat when Mom said something that ruined everything. Olivia, why don't you stay for dinner? Great, now my entire family has all evening to make a fool of me. Step 3 of my plan was to take Olivia to pop at Tony's and ask her to homecoming there. So much for that happening. I'll spare you most of the details of dinner. Mom and Dad were predictably embarrassing, but Olivia seemed unfazed by everything going on. At least I have something to keep Roderick off my back now. Guess what Roderick's fine for me? A new phone charger! When dinner was finally over, Mom said I should walk Olivia home since it was dark out. On the way there, Olivia told me my family was hilarious and she wished her family was as entertaining. I just laughed because I didn't know how to respond to such an insane statement. As we got to the doorstep of her house, I realized there probably wasn't going to be a better time than now to complete the last step of my plan. I took a deep breath and tied the best, tried my best to ignore the knot in my stomach and the sweat dripping profusely down my back despite the cold air. Olivia, I was uh, wondering if you wanted to go to homecoming with me. You always hear from adults that the worst she could say is no, but I've seen enough coming-of-age movies to know that's not true. With you? You seriously thought I'd want to go with a loser like you? Ah, 
Hello, 911. I'm being harassed. For whatever reason, reality was better this time. What? No poster? I'm kidding. Of course I'll go with you. Sunday. I couldn't believe I was going to homecoming with Olivia. It was about time things went my way. I can't think of anyone who deserves it more than I do. I kept replaying last night over and over in my head. I'm not sure how I worked up the courage to ask her, but I'm so glad I did. I called Rally to tell him the good news. Rally, guess what? I asked Olivia to the homecoming and she said yes. You did what? I know, I can't believe it either. What? I, I thought you'd be happy for me. Greg, I told you about this. I wanted to go with Olivia. Huh? I, I didn't know that, but why? Because I like her, Greg. What? You like Olivia? I thought you were gay. <laughs> he hung up. I guess I, just, I should take that as a no. Monday, I was planning on going to homecoming as a group with Rowley, but I guess that's out of the window now. Everything else has gone right so far. I wasn't le gonna let them ruin this. And so far, he hasn't been able to. But with the grade already knows I'm going to homecoming with Olivia, and at first I wanted to keep it a secret until the day of, but I had a hard time containing myself. Guess he has a hot date for homecoming. In my defense, I never have stuff to brag about, and I wasn't gonna pass this up. This week is Spirit Week, which is how Plainview High celebrates homecoming. At the pep rally today, Olivia spoke about all of the planning the student council's done for the dance. I guess people start, started to put two and two together because my popularity exploded after that. At least it definitely did with the guys. That is your date? Before, Bryce seemed a little embarrassed that I was getting the drinks for his party, but now he was all for it. I even got to sit at the same lunch table with him, Holly Hills, and a bunch of other popular kids. I almost regretted offering to buy drinks for Bryce, because at this rate, I would have gone to his party anyways. Friday. This popularity thing has been going on for a few days now. It doesn't seem like it's letting up. Before, it was like I was invisible, but now people who had never given me the time of day were acknowledging me. I can't believe some people live like this every day. Normally, whenever I'm riding high, something comes and brings me crashing down, but things just kept getting better. At the homecoming football game against Bishop Garrigan, the guys were all over me. Pause, Greg. What, what do you mean by that? And after the game, I hung out with Olivia again. It turns out she's a horror movie fan, too. I don't like watching horror movies alone, but now I have someone to watch all the stuff Rally was too chicken for with. Things are pretty much perfect. Homecoming. Well, today's the big day. Mom spent all afternoon fixing my hair and getting my suit ready. Dad gave me a lecture on responsibility. Roderick just winked at me since he had brought the booze over to Bryce's last night. I thought I'd be nervous, but I was mostly just excited. All my hard work had finally paid off. Olivia, sent, Olivia said she would be here over at 7. The plan was actually for her to drive us to the school since she had a license. Felt a little weird being in the passenger seat with a girl, but I wasn't complaining. This girl is a catch grabber. You better be on the, your best behavior. Trust me, I was thinking the exact same thing. After that, Mom spent like 15 minutes talk, taking our pictures. On the ride there, I asked Olivia if she wanted to take pictures with her parents too. Oh, well, uh, my older sis is working late and... Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to. Oh, don't worry, it's not a big deal, really. I felt pretty bad, so I steered the conversation towards a different subject after that. Once we got to the school, we had to wait in a long line that stretched around the building. I was a little annoyed that, that we had to wait, considering we pretty much organized the entire thing. When we reached the entrance, we had our picture taken in front of the backdrop stand. The picture would have been nice, except I got a glimpse of Rally standing behind us in line right before the photographer snapped the shot. Isn't that rally? Should we say hello? Oh, I'll raise you the punch bowl. My ploy managed to distract Olivia. I did feel a tiny bit bad about avoiding rally, but taking to, talking to him w with her there would have been seriously awkward. When we walked inside the gym, I was actually really impressed with how everything turned out. Us student council members really hit the ball out of the park, but I'm sad to say I didn't get all of my ideas approved. I'm not sure if drummies would be an appropriate appetizer for homecoming. Once the music started, I was able to forget all about Rally. The DJ was playing all the good songs, thanks to me. Eventually, the dance hit, hit full swing and things started going wild. At one point, the dance circle formed, and you'll never believe who was at the center. I didn't even know he still went here. Yo, Fraggly, the Zaza changed, so I ain't gonna lie. I was having the time of my life. Drag was doing these goofy dances to my left, Bryce was to my light, right, Olivia was... She wasn't next to me. I couldn't see her anywhere. I navigated my way through the crowd and scanned the dance floor for Olivia. She wasn't there. For a moment, rage clouded my mind. Rowley must have had something to do with this. I pushed my way out of the gym and down the main hall hallway. Then I ran into Olivia, literally. Well, to be more specific, I ran into her shoe. Olivia helped me to my feet and asked me if I was alright. I told her I was looking for her and was wondering if she was alright. She avoided my eyes for a moment. Then out of nowhere, she said this. Hey, do you want to go to the student council room for a bit? 
Devil you is, Greg. Gregory, let's go. Devil you is. Come on, come on, come on, come on. For a second, I thought the music blaring from the gym was making me mishear her. But from the next thing I know, we were walking through the dimly lit halls towards the classroom. I really didn't expect this to happen. I could feel my heart pounding through my chest so loudly that she must have been able to hear it. She opened the door to the room, and I followed her inside. I Sorry, I just wanted to get away from all the noise for a moment. Can I talk to you about something? Yeah, do you remember when we were going to the report those seniors for smoking, but you decided not to turn them in? Uh-huh. That wasn't exactly how I remembered it, but I was, was I sure wasn't going to correct her. Well, it made a big impression on me. You're just a freshman, but you stood up for what you believed in. I mean, turning in our own students? We're not the police. I let the rest of the student council stop reporting people, but the principal made me keep doing it. I have a list of kids I'm supposed to turn in Monday, and I know it's not right, but... I may seem really put together, but really, I don't know what I'm doing. My older sis, she expects so much from me. She raised me and my other sister, and on her own after our dad died. I'm supposed to make her proud and live up to her success, and that's why I joined the student council and I'm so particular about my grades. But I'm just listening to what adults tell me to do. I may be the student council president, but I just don't feel like I even have any real friends. And why should I? I'm just a conformist, an overachiever, honor student no one likes. But you took interest in me. You actually tried to get to know me better. Why? Geez, I better choose my words carefully here. I know what it's like to not have any friends. Believe me, before recently, everyone told me I was a wimp. I know I'm not doing a good job of impressing you, but it's the truth. You're not a useless honor student. I think you're amazing and felt a connection with you immediately. I know you'll make the right decision. It makes me feel better, Gregory. I don't think you're a wimp, and I felt a connection too. Olivia hugged me and gave me a quick kiss on the cheek. I guess my little speech did the trick. Let's go dance. We held hands on the way there, and it felt nice. What about Rally? You don't like him? Rally, he's sweet, but isn't he, you know... Yeah, 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 he is, totally. Everything was perfect. I should be happy, but something was missing. I excused myself from the dance and wandered towards the edge of the gym. I think I knew subconsciously what I was doing. Rowley's my best friend. We had the rest of our high school ahead of us. I didn't want to end our friendship over something student stupid. Hey. I told Rowley I was sorry for making assumptions about him, and I didn't realize he liked Olivia, too. Believe it or not, Rowley was ready to forgive me. He actually said he was sorry, too, for trying to guilt me for asking her to the dance. This has to be like the 10th time we've fought and made up, but I hope this time is the last. Besides, this is my story, and every protagonist needs a funny sidekick. I was in such a good mood, I would invite him to come to Bryce's party with us. The dance was winding down, so the three of us made our way out to the school and into the parking lot. We were about to get in the car when Olivia's phone started ringing. I'm so sorry, it's my sister. She wants me home. I can still drop you guys off at the party, though. Is everything alright? Oh, everything's fine. She's just strict about staying out too late, you know? I couldn't tell if she was lying or just being awkward, but I decided not to press the matter further. Anyways, we all got in the car and left the school. Like I said before, Bryce's neighborhood is on the north side of town, which is the rich area. All the houses there are basically mansions. When I was little, every time we'd drive past the houses on the north side, I'd ask Mama if we were poor. She'd give me the same answer every time. The Hefleys are rich in character, and that's what matters. If you saw Bryce's house, you know why I never believed her. Even before we pulled up to Bryce's house, we could hear music blaring from down the street. Rowley and I thanked Olivia, then got out of the car. The main party was happening in the backyard, and people were going in through the side gate. I peeked in, and things were looking wild already. There was even a floating drink table in the pool. I looked back to Rowley in excitement, but to my surprise, it didn't even seem to share my enthusiasm. Wait a minute, Joshy's not coming? Rowley, you actually believe that? Seriously, man? Greg, you lied to me, and you didn't tell me there would be drinking. You know I'm not comfortable with that kind of stuff. Come on, Rally, grow up a little. We're not in middle school anymore. This is my, our chance to finally become popular, to be accepted. There you go. You only think about yourself, Greg. You don't know about anyone except yourself. I knew you only started hanging out with Olivia to get more popular. Look, I'm not a perfect person, I admit it. I care a lot about popularity, but so what? That's normal. Everyone does. I'm still a good person. I know who I am. I don't think you do, Greg. Shut up, Rowley. You don't know what it's like to be me. Huh, what? You get everything you wanted. Popularity, a girl, Bryce's approval. That's all you ever wanted since middle school, isn't it? You don't get it. You don't know what it's like being the middle child. You don't have brothers constantly trying to destroy your life. You have parents who care about you. You have other friends at school. Real friends. People who like you for who you are. People don't like me. Everything, sa everything says, everyone says just be yourself, but being myself isn't good enough. I have to put on a mask every day and pretend to be someone I'm not. I envy you, Rowley. I'm sorry, Greg, but you've never been a good friend to me. You've been malip manipulative, selfish, narcissistic, and I can't deal with you anymore. Rowley, 
Just go to the party, Greg. I'm going home. Uh-oh, it's Olivia. Greg, is what you said true? Did you only try to get to know me to get more popular? No, I mean, well, I kind of did that first when I got to know you and I started to like you. And I liked you too. I really did. Olivia, just shut up, asshole. Well, things with Rally and Olivia have pretty much gone down the tube, but at least with all the melodramatic crap out of the way, I could finally get to the actual party. The music from the party drowned our fighting, so we didn't cause a scene. Bryce greeted me and offered a drink. From what I've seen in movies, people don't just drink to have fun. They drink to forget, and I really need to forget the last few minutes. I don't remember how many drinks I ended up having, but I do remember dropping my phone in the pool, and after that, my memory started to get fuzzy. I was able to get my phone out of the pool, but it wasn't turning on. I told Bryce and he took me inside to put it in a bag of rice on the kitchen counter. They invited me to play some game called Rage Cage. I'm a little embarrassed to say, but I don't remember much after that. Next thing I knew, I was singing in the cold, hard tile in Bat Bryce's bathroom. I have no idea what time it was. My head was groggy and I felt sick to my stomach, so I figured I should just head home. From the sound on the other side of the door, the party was still going strong. I went to the kitchen to get my phone, but it wasn't there. That's when I ran into Bryce again. Hey Bryce, have you seen my- Greg, there you are. Come join us. We were just talking about you. Before I could say anything, he led me to a room full of the popular kids I had been eating lunch with this week. I never knew you were actually chill, Greg. Yeah, everyone thought you were a wimp back in middle school. I thought hanging out with Bryce and his friends would make me feel better about Rowley and Olivia. I thought maybe I could forget about them, but then as the conversation continued, I realized I couldn't. Greg, why do you hang out, still hang out with that kid Rowley? Yeah, he's way beneath you now. Have you laid the pipe on Olivia yet? She's hot, but she's so conceited. She got me suspended last year. Major daddy issues, I bet. Uh, yeah. They abandoned me. I shouldn't care about them anymore, so why did I feel this way? That's when it finally hit me. What a horrible person I've been to my two friends, Olivia, who I manipulated this whole time, to the point where she trusted me with her darkest secret, and Rally, who I never treated with any respect for years, and they stayed with me for so long. They may never forgave me, but like I deserve their forgiveness, so I just stand up for them. Shut the fuck up, all of you. Don't ever talk about Olivia or Rally like that. You don't know a damn thing about them. I can't believe I spent so much of my life only caring about popularity. What a complete waste of time. You guys are awful, and I- Whoops. That was my Nana's urn. You mean like her ashes? Get out! I told Bryce I was planning on leaving anyways, and asked if he could at least find my phone for me first. Looking back, it probably wasn't the smartest thing to say in that situation. And that's how I ended up with my face on the floor for the second time that night. So there I was, back to square one. I'm pretty much down to zero friends again, and it's all my fault. You know, I really didn't expect things to come crashing down so quickly. One minute you're at the top of the world, next thing you know you're drunk, walking on the side of the road in the middle of the night, and I didn't even have my phone to know what time it was. I don't even know if I made the right decision back there. There's no way Rally or Olivia are ever going to talk to me again, so I'd even, I, why would I even bother defending them? I guess I just I couldn't stand there and watch. It didn't matter anymore anyway. I needed to focus on him somehow making it home in one piece. My house was on the complete other side of town, and the streets were dark and I was still having a tough time walking straight. At one point, I tripped on the curb and found myself in the middle of the street. I glanced up, but car headlines blinded my eyes, and at that moment, just for a second, I didn't really care if it hit me or not. Greg, are you okay? Olivia, Rowley, what are you guys doing here? We know what happened at the party. We came looking for you. How do you know about that? You should see this. So apparently someone at the party filmed my little outburst in its entirety and posted it to social media. Olivia explained to me that once she saw the post, she tried to call me, but I didn't answer. She got worried about where I was, so she drove around looking for me. Rally had seen the video too, so we decided to search together. You guys didn't have to do this. I messed up, and I don't expect you to forgive me. Greg, you hurt both of us, but what you did back there showed who you really are. You stood up for us when you didn't have to. Then you're a good person and a good friend. Yeah, I know. That's pretty much how the night ended. After Olivia dropped me off, I had to explain to Mom why I was home at 3 in the morning, which wasn't a pretty scene. Things didn't work out perfectly, but when do I? When do they ever for me? I'm not going to stay a kid forever, even if it feels that way sometimes. When I think back to the past couple of months, I didn't regret anything. Sure, I've made more than my share of mistakes, but without those mistakes, without any risks, I wouldn't have grown as a person. At least that's why I'm going to tell Mom in my defense while she's figuring out the best way to ground me. November. Saturday. It's been a few weeks since homecoming and things have been going back to normal. I'm no longer popular, but I have friends that can no one care about me. And that's more than good enough. Rally and Olivia and I have all been studying for chemistry together, and it's really been paying off. I might actually get a good grade in that class for once. 
On the other hand, Mum found out about alcohol, and I've been grounded ever since. Manny told him about the entire deal I made with Roderick. Don't ask me how he knew about that, but for ever, whatever reason, Dad didn't seem mad at me at all. I remember my hot first high school dance. Whenever I read a book, it seems like the main character learns a lesson at the end, I'm trying to figure out one for myself. Remember to value those who you care about. Uh, don't let fame cloud your judgment. Stop worrying about others' approval. I don't know. I don't know about all that, but I do know th three things. Always have the smartest person in the room to help on your homework. Never lose track on your phone, and never use Josh to manipulate Rowley. The end. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe. I'm not going to join on with a long outro, but please do subscribe. And if you want more long fan fiction like this one, I have a playlist that I'll probably link in the description, so go check that out. And let me know what you want me to read next. I'm going to probably put up another community poll on my community tab, so go check that out. And yeah, I'm out here. Bye.